uh, I interned at two uh, quant firms specializing more in their sort of data engineering side. Okay. And data pipelining. So yeah. All right, so, so yeah, that naturally involved more Python and Rust. Today's video sponsor is me. I built this platform called getcrack.io because I noticed that candidates were really struggling in the knowledge round. That doesn't just mean language knowledge. It also means things like concurrency, data, design patterns, networking, computer architecture, operating systems. This platform covers it all. We have over 600 questions from three different languages, C++, Python, and Rust. Now, our questions aren't only multiple choice. We also have real coding problems. Make sure to check it out. What if I was to print what grid is? Uh, okay, so I think, uh, so when you, so I think the cat, so, okay, so first of all, this seems like a, a 2D array that's free by free. Mm -hmm. um, you're assigning the first element of the first row to free, but because you multiplied by free, it didn't actually uh do deep copies but more i guess shadow copies so for every row the first element will be set to free and the rest will be zeros yeah good job most people don't get that let me think of something let's say i have uh, a equals hello the word hello yeah and then i have b equals the word hello yeah and i type print a is b is that true or false so I would say it's true because you're doing identification uh, checking. So you're checking if they have the same ID, which is essentially checking if it's the same object uh, in memory. And the Python interpreter has like some sort of st string pooling in a similar way that it does for numbers. So yeah, I think it will be re those two variables will be re referencing the same like region and memory essentially is my yeah, point. That, so I think it's yes. That's, that's right. And here's bonus points. There's a word that describes exactly what you just said. It's a one, it's just one word. Do you know what that word might be? It's such, uh, that, it's that a, describes. That describes that memory pooling. Yeah. Uh, it starts with an I. ID? I mean, that's what no. is checks, right? It's like ID of object. Oh, okay. It's, it's such, there's a word, it's such with an I, I N. Somebody in, somebody in chat got it, but I told you not to look at chat, so. Yeah, I so N. there's a, I, I, starts with I and N. In... Interning, that's the technical term. Uh, it's okay, bonus, that's cool. why I said you don't need to get it. It's just kind of, just now you All know. All right. I want you to tell me what the, what gets printed. Uh, it's an uh, integer because uh, it would have been a tuple if you had a comma, but yeah, it's an integer. Yeah, good for you. Um, good, good, good. Um, what is what is the gill in Python? Um, it's a mechanism to make uh, the internal garbage collector thread safe. Okay. Uh, in the sense that, so every object has a... Um, every object uh, it, within the Python interpreter has like this field called reference reference count um, and it essentially ensures that only one thread is executing Python bytecode at a time uh, so that uh, for instance uh, in another world where there was there wasn't a guild two threads would be able to de to de to decrement uh, increment or or decrement that reference count and then there would be a thread race and then you'd get a, a memory leak Right. And so in a multi-threaded program to prevent yeah. to prevent a Python thread from holding the gill forever, uh, Python's bytecode interpreter pauses Python every X period of time by default. <laughs> Do you know what that time period is? Uh, I didn't. I, I, I wouldn't have thought it would be based on a time I would have thought maybe like every byte something based on like every by code they execute. No, so, I, I don't know. That's uh, I'm okay. Gonna guess. I'm going to get back to the answer. But do you know what do you know in the world of multi threading? Do you know what it's called when one thread is preempted for another? There's a specific term and it's not a trivia term. It's it's used a lot in the world of more low level programming or more like systems programming. So when a thread preempts the other one, uh, it's not it's not one thread preempts it. It's that the scheduler deschedules one thread and then preempts another to start running. 
Oh, like a it's like context switch. Yeah, that's right. Or... That's right. Good. Okay. It's... Okay. Yeah. And so, the, the, just as it relates to the gill and multi-threading, it's every five milliseconds, and you can actually set it. And... Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, and that's it, interesting. Yeah, it's not important, but I just thought it might be. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's um, a good to know. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm gonna send you another code snippet, and this is gonna test your understanding of for loops. So, sure. what gets printed in the code snippet that I just sent you? Uh, so X, so I think, so, okay, so this, the code inside gets executed three times, okay, so that's something that's already a given. Uh, the first time X will be zero, then it gets assigned to three, but I think it hops back, uh, but once it jumps back to, like, the top of the loop, um, it gets assigned to one, I think. Uh, Wait, so uh, I'm guessing, uh, maybe you can type that in chat. Uh, for, what it does at the end of the loop is X gets assigned next of range three. Okay, so that's how I see it. Like after every end of loop. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, I think the X equals three here doesn't do much. Okay, so you would say that it, I don't know, it doesn't zero one two. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, so the range returns, I believe, an iterable. I'm not a Python dev, so yeah. correct me if it's an iterator or an iterate, iterable. So I got my terms right. And um, but then yeah, mm -hmm. X is set to three at the end of the loop, but the loop doesn't terminate because of that. X gets reset, mm -hmm. or uh, yeah, its value gets reset to the, uh, next, the, the yeah. next value. And um, I'm gonna send you another snippet of code because I think you're doing really well with these code snippets. And I wanted to get your take on what you think gets printed here, or maybe nothing gets printed and exceptions thrown. So you have this, or you have this list with four numbers. You call reverse, and then you call sorted of reverse equals sorted of reverse. Okay, so reverse. Uh, uh, I always forget. That's the one thing with reverse is I always forget if it's if it returns. Uh, yeah, I'll just give you my full process in this. So, I'm always confused whether reverse gives uh, like an iterable, uh, where it lazily produces values, or um, or a list. So, uh, so, what I would do is I, because you're unsure, there's no need to guess one or mm -hmm. the other. What I suggest you do is you give me the answer based off both of those. So, if it was to produce an iterable, what would the answer be? So, uh, yeah, but does does it make sense to to sort an interval like that's the thing i don't think it does right it pro so uh i would say on the basis that it returns a list i would say um uh, so sorted returns a copy okay so that's the even okay so i think i would say this is true Okay, so if it does return a list, true. What if it returns an iterable? Because it does not return a list. Okay, okay. I, I'm confused how you can sort a, an iterable. Like, I'm trying to think how would you, how would one sort a, an iterable. So he would probably have to materialize, materialize I the list at the beginning of the implementation of sorted. Is it, I think. So... So, so maybe that consumes the iterator, mm -hmm. and then the next one, when you call sorted again for like the right hand side, then it's already consumed and uh, doesn't return anything. So then it would be false on that basis. Yeah, good job. What order is our Python variables evaluated in? Python parameters evaluated in? Ooh. Uh, I'm guessing we we assume C Python or what? Sure. Implementing, yeah. Uh, I will go. With, yeah, you know, uh, my my guess would be leftmost innermost. But... Yeah, left to right. Yeah, yeah. So if I was to do one divided divided, so two slashes by negative <laughs> two, what's the answer? By negative two. Zero would make sense here. 
That's the most guessed answer, but it's not the right answer. Oh, is it not? Okay. Um... What else might it be and why? Want Um Yeah, I'm trying. Yeah, I don't think I have this one. I don't wanna lose waste more time. Well, there's only two mm. numbers around well, one divided by two, negative two is point five, right? Yeah. So if it's not zero, what's the other side of that? Oh yeah, no oh, okay, it was minus one because yeah. It, yeah. Does it lower? Yeah. Because okay. it floors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, when you divide by zero in Python, is an exception raised or what happens? Uh, yeah. It's an exception. Division by zero. Okay. Exception, cool. if I'm not mistaken. Cool. Um, let's say I have a Python function that takes in two. Uh, I use type hinting. So it takes in a. Yep. Like, I want to add two numbers, a and b. And so I type hint it. When I type my code, I type int. Right? Yeah. So A colon, I think it is, int, comma, B colon, int. And then I say returns int. So I have that trailing um, yeah. arrow int. And what if I? What happens if I try to pass in two strings? Um, so I know when you do that and you return a value, it casts it to whatever that trailing return type is. So I don't see why it would be any different for parameters. So I'd say they get casted. They tr they attempt to cast it to int. So you're saying the type hinting will cast it to int? So if it's like string like one, yeah. like a string one, maybe it'll cast it to, to one. But the thing is, is, like that's a pretty for something that's kind of mostly cosmetic or like just for code hygiene. It's it's a big thing to. To change. So, uh, um, based, based off my understanding of what you said, it seems like you're saying the strings are cast or converted to integers. Yeah, I mean, I know it. I think it. I think I, I can recall it happening for for return types, but for arguments, I feel like it's a lot to to because type hints are like mostly for code hygiene in Python. There isn't you don't enforce much unless you're using a MyPy or whatever. Yeah, so, so if, if you do think they're just for code hygiene, what would you think the expected result would be? Here would be one string concatenation for me here. Yeah, that's right. Good job. Yeah. So it's just for code hygiene, uh, just yeah. during the, the code writing process. It, it doesn't actually affect yeah. the, the types when <laughs> you pass whatever you'd like to pass into them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good on you. Okay. See, it's amazing the quality of people you get to work with and speak to when you work in quant or a related field. Because not only can I tell this guy's smart, but he also has the right attitude. And that's so important. That's not the guy that's crying in the comment section. That's a dumb question, that's for sure. He's not that type of guy, right? So on a scale from one to 10, uh, where 10 is like God for his level and five is average, and one is horrible, he would definitely be probably in like the eight range. Um, I, I really like the way he can be vocalized. Maybe, maybe, yeah, eight or maybe, maybe 8.5. He, like, even though he didn't understand the question, what I really liked when I asked him about the, about the reversed question, for example, is he said, well, I don't really know the answer, but based off the fact that reverse can either produce a list or an iter or an, or, or an iterable, therefore this can happen or that can happen. Right? That's the high-level thinking. And that's the good, yeah, talking through his thought process. That was really good.